Uh, I'm Crimson, and uh, I do a lot of armor, and I transitioned into makeup, and now I try to do a bunch of everything. Um, and so these are costumes I've made for previous Katsukons and Otakons, um, and yeah. Uh, I'm Shannon, my cosplay handle is Meichan. Uh, I primarily do fabric-based costumes, but I also make a ton of accessories. And I've done a couple armors as well. This is from my last Katsukan costume. So you'll see some of my stuff in there as well. Hello, I'm Kyle, um, RPG Kyle. Uh, I have all the costumes I've done with thermoplastics. Like everything that I've done with thermoplastics are rather small. Um, I generally work in foam for the most part, but I do enjoy delving into all the other pieces. So yes, I have some expertise that I can lend to this panel. <laughs> Um, so the way this panel is structured is that uh, kind of go through like a basic building block of like uh, like a stereotypical traditional armor build, like how that looks, um, and then we go. I kind of we dive into the each kinds of thermoplastics there are and kind of compare them and contrast them and see like, oh, what is this thermoplastic better for? What is it worse for? How does it compare to this other thermoplastic? And at the end, we'll kind of show how uh, you can mix other materials with thermoplastics to uh, create things that are probably more budget friendly. <laughs> so uh, I just kind of put out some safety tools uh, for thermoplastics, a heat gun. I like using wooden tools that you like dip in water and when you can, you can form like hot thermoplastics so it doesn't stick to the, uh, the material. And then scissors and a heat resistant mat is really important because if you're heating up a piece of thermoplastic, it might stick to the table and then you just you can't get it off the table and you're just kind of done. <laughs> and if you don't have a heat resistant mat, I actually use the um, EVA foam, uh, just the ones you can use for your garage flooring. Uh, yeah, the traditional EVA foam. I, I put one of those over a, my, my, my janky setup is I've got an archery target on top of the dog cage that I put my my piece of EVA foam on and that's where I think up. But, uh, it, it works, so, um, if you're I've, budget friendly. <laughs> I've also seen people, like, they'll take cardboard and they'll, like, tape uh, tin foil yeah, to tin it. Foil. Like, make sure the tin foil is really flat and they'll tape that to the cardboard and they'll use that. Um, so these are, like, the four main thermoplastics that we'll go over. And so the first one is Warbless Finest Art. So here are some examples of like armor builds that have used Warbless Finest Art. Um, and one of them is me. <laughs> this is also made of just regular, uh, my spicer mask from Bioshock. Did you, have you, how did you do the, the webbing? The webbing is also Warbla that I just, uh, Warble scraps that I rolled out and then uh, put in one of the best things about regular Warbla is that it's very sticky, so it adheres to itself really well. Uh, other ones, like Black Warbla, you can do a little bit more work, but regular Warbla is really good at sticking to itself. Yeah, so just as a quick overview in case you're not familiar with what Warbla is, Warbla is like a mixture of, it's like sawdust and, yeah. and friendly plastic, and it's a bunch of different things that are put together and they make this hard substance that when heated up turns kind of like a, it's almost like putty, but putty with a grain. So think of putty, but with stuff inside of it. And then you can shape it to whatever you want to make. And then afterwards, if it's regular Warbla, sometimes it'll have a slight grain to it. If it's Warbla's finest art, it has less of a grain, and black Warbla, even less of a grain to it. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't actually used like the pearly Warbla yet. Have you? It's very similar to black Warbla. Huh. But we will touch on that when we get to black Yeah. Okay, so um, I just kind of threw in a couple, like a step-by-step -step process. There's like different methods people use with Warbla. There's like a, there's one method called like the sandwiching method, where you layer a piece of Warbla, a piece of craft foam, and a piece of Warbla underneath, and you heat them together. Um, and it, it's like a craft foam sandwich between two pieces of Warbla. Um, That's what this mask is, but the one thing I found about the sandwich method, it A, uses twice as much Warbla, and B, it's harder to get air bubbles out on the back side. Um, the other, I guess, traditional method you can use is um, what this one is. Wrap over or something? I don't know what it's called. It's, it's just you kind of fold 
a little bit of wobble around the edges. It's hard to tell because I have black foam on the inside, but it's it's you take your ship of warbla, you put it around your craft bone and you just kind of fold maybe half an inch around the edge. It saves, it's a less warbla and it doesn't bubble as much. Yeah. So it's my preferred method, but the sandwich method also works great. And that's what I did before I figured out you could save less warbla, save more warbla. The, the sandwich method is also heavier because you have more warbla, so the yarn work piece might be heavier. Um, so this was just construction. I like made a pattern. Uh, made that into a craft foam, did the sandwiching, and added like all my scraps, made them into detail pieces, and then painted. Um, so that's just what that basic uh, basic step-by-step -step looks like. Um, so here are more photos of like, here I used pink foam, and then I wrapped the pink foam with warbla. So it's kind of like a sandwich method, but I gave myself more like seam allowance on the outsides to fold over the thicker edges. And then um, I replicated that on the other side, attached it to a wooden dowel, and then I added like a ton of details with all my scraps. Always save like any types of scraps that you have for anything, whether it be foam or anything, because you can always cut up all uh, little detail strips. Um, oh yeah, here's scraps right here. So I actually made like a little, my own little like Harry Potter wand thing with just all scraps. So all that's made up with like just my box of warbler scraps. Uh, that sit in my room <laughs> and a piece of like leather stripping. Um, and so the whole inside, I just took all a bunch of scraps, heated them together and just rolled it out. And then I twisted the end and then added some like detailing. I don't know, when you heat it up, it kind of, you can use it like clay and then it'll harden. And then um, also with this picture right here, can you see the cursor? Yes, okay. Um, this is tin foil that I just kind of made like a, a bare bones like structure out of. I wanted to make antlers. And then I took my warble scraps and I just wrapped them around that tin foil. And then I took like a big uh, sander and I just sanded it away. Since it has like sawdust pieces in it, um, it sands very well and takes good to like wood products. So any type of like wood filler or like sanding for uh, warbless finest art goes really well compared to other thermoplastics. Big downside though to Warbla is that if you want it as smooth as you can get it, sanding is like a thing. But that's pretty much the same with most thermoplastics, with the exception of uh, Fibra. Fibra. Yeah, and then, Fibra. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've heard Tibra. And I was like, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> and Sintra as well, but Sintra you can't get cool complex curves like this. Um, I probably should have left this photo for the end, but this is uh, me combining thermoplastics with other materials. So I have like acrylic like domes and acrylic like test tubes that I kind of like deconstructed and added warbla to. Um, and you can see here how I make like fake screws and stuff like that and they all go up here. Um, so yeah, and these are all, this is all scrap pieces too. I, I just took my scrap box and went ham. <laughs> I like had too many, I had to get rid of them. Um, oh no, they don't show up. I had little dragon emojis. They were really cute, and they were like my like scoring system. So now you can just guys have to look at boxes. Okay, dang it. Um, so I give it. So I have like five different ways I rank the different thermoplastics. So I have a self adhesion section. So does it stick to itself very well? So you don't need to use any glue. Um, does it? Can it be smoothed out? and uh, how easy is it to sculpt? And like, is it really hard to turn into like, uh, like a 3D edging or like to make like a little like figure with it? Um, and is it really flexible? Like once you have your armor done and you put it on, is it really rigid or can you flex it a little bit? Um, and then the craftability, how easy is it to learn like your hands to learn the language of like how the material works, if that makes sense. So I gave it like a five out of five for self-adhesion. Like it sticks to itself really well. You don't need any glue. You don't need like to like reheat it again and press it down again and make sure it's st stuck. Um, smoothness, I gave a three out of five because uh, as, as you said, sanding, sanding is a thing if you want like super, super smooth edges. Um, also priming, I'm gonna talk about priming after this, but uh, usually with Warbla, I will, take a long time to prime it to make sure that it's super smooth and like everything goes together. Um, whereas other thermoplastics, you don't need as many layers. Um, sculptability, I did a four out of five 
Uh, it's pretty, it's not super rigid uh, to sculpt, but it's, it's pretty friendly. I would say uh, it works pretty much like clay, but you can't get it super, super crisp, but like crisp enough that it'll work. <laughs> Um, flexibility, it's it's pretty rigid, like if you make like a breastplate and you put it on, um, it won't like bend with you too much, it will a little bit, um, and so that's why I gave it a 3 out of 5, and then craftability, I might be biased because I like grew up using, not grew up, but like started with Warbla, so my hands are very accustomed to the language of Warbla, so I like find it really easy to use, and my mind works really well with Warbla, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, everyone has their preferred. Yeah, so this craftability might just be a bias of me for all of them. <laughs> um, do you guys have anything to touch on? I The only downside for me to Warbla is that it's expensive. Yeah. Um, it's a product that, like, when you buy it, you know you're going to want to use, like, as much of it as possible, and be as sparing as possible. Um, that's the only downside, really, for me to Warbla. I, I do think it's it's really awesome, but I think there's a lot of alternatives out on the market that probably work just as well. That you as can, a cheaper option. Yeah, as a cheaper option, yeah. But it's great. If you are if you want to get into it, you want to try it, try it out. Like, buy a small piece. Yeah, you have a question? Uh, what temperature can you hold it with? Oh, uh... I don't know a specific temperature. Yeah, I turn my heat on a high and like wait 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, you will want to be careful when working with a heat gun though, because I think my heat gun goes up to like 400 degrees or something. And I burned myself last weekend, so be careful, fam. Do not touch your heat gun. I, okay, so with heat guns, I like the cheaper heat guns because the more expensive ones have safeties on them, and <laughs> the safeties get in my way. <laughs> um, so, the safeties for a heat gun is that when you turn it off, it'll cold, it'll blow cold air out of it until it's room temperature. Um, but if I'm using a heat gun, I'm going to want to like turn it on, use it, turn it off for two seconds, and use it again if I need to. So having it blow cool air for like a minute is going to be really annoying to me. However, those more expensive ones have like heat meters on them, and I, I would say when I did use it, it was probably around. 50 to 300 area is where I used. The heat gun went up to 425, which I never put it up that high because uh, that was scary. scary. Yeah. That was too scary. <laughs> Generally, you're just like $7 one from Harbor Freight does the job. The yeah. two setting up and down. Yeah, and there's like a Home Depot version too that's like 15 bucks, and I've used it for four years. It looks awful, but it does the job. So, you know what? My only complaint talking about heat for, for regular. That I, I find that I, I repeat it too quickly and I'll get a lot of bubbles with it. So I usually work with uh, black warbla, which I guess it takes longer to overheat it. Um, so if you're a little bit too like excited to heat it up and you use the high setting only, uh, you might not want to make everything out of regular warbla because you'll deal with a little bit more bubbling. But I will talk about how to get rid of bubbles as well. Oh, no, that's, that, that was my thought, yeah. I was wondering about how long does it take to, to harden after you've done it? Um, Can you repeat his question? Yes, he asked how long it takes to, uh, for it to harden again after you heat it up. Um, I would say minutes. it depends how big the piece is. Um, like, bigger pieces will take longer to cool down, but... Um, it also depends on how how much you can it yeah. because uh, if I'm if I'm getting the the original shape, it's gonna I'm gonna heat it up a lot more than if I'm gonna be just adding on um, like attachment straps. Usually I'll I will get my my whole shape and then I'll just heat up the edge so I can add a strap to it after it's already in the shape I want. And so that takes like almost no time to dry because it's just that small part. But when I've heated up to the whole shape, I probably hold it against my body for like at least three to five minutes. I would say there's like a, oops, there is like a, so say you're making like a piece of armor and you need the basic shape. I would say if you heat it up and hold it in the basic shape for like 15 to 30 seconds, it'll like 
t it'll stay in that shape, but it'll still be able to flex if you want to. So that extra like 30 seconds, it, it won't be like super flexible, but it'll be enough to where you can make small adjustments. But if you need it to be in that shape, I would wait like, like a, a full minute or so if you wanted to keep it in that shape. Oh yeah. It sticks to other plastic materials. Yeah, I've had it get stuck in my fabric, but that was unintentional. If you want to attach like a piece of armor or an accessory to to a fabric piece, I'd recommend uh, just gluing on some Velcro um, with maybe it's like E6000 or something to your armor, and then um, like sewing on a Velcro piece to, to your fabric. It it doesn't really stick to fabric the way it does to itself or to other plastics. But you can, so with all these products, I found out that they're thin enough, and if you have like a heavy duty needle on your sewing machine, you can actually sew Velcro onto the thermoplastic piece. So if you have like, a, like you say you're making like a, a hip something and you want to Velcro it onto your fabric on your hip, I would like cut out the pieces of your shape that you're making, if you're doing like a sandwich method, and sew the Velcro placement on before you heat it, and then heat it and form it, and then it well, it'll stick. Um, but yeah, it's super fun to play around with like sewing more blood into things. It's kind of weird because you're like, that's not supposed to work, but it is. <laughs> um, so the last part of these mini sections of each material, I go over prime or we go over priming. And the cool thing about uh, Warbless Finest Art is that uh, since it has the, the wood pieces in it, the wood shavings uh, or the, the dust, um, you can use wood glue, and the wood glue will stick onto the warbler very well. Um, and the reason you would use wood glue is because it's really thick, and when it dries, it creates that smooth surface over the uh, warbler. I suggest like two to three layers. If, if I want it to be a really smooth piece, I'll usually do two layers, and then I'll do the third layer, and I also have like a cup of water with me. Yeah. Like, smooth out the third layer with my like dipping my fingers into a cup of water and smooth it out but it also depends on the texture you want your final piece to be um i would i'm gonna say something bad i um i was con crunching last year i actually did not i used spray primer on these pieces but i wanted them to have a little bit more texture to them i didn't necessarily want them to be really smooth and precise so you might not have to do three layers of wood glue every time you want to prime a piece but if you want really crisp and shiny, like Gilgamesh from Fate armor, <laughs> you want to definitely take your time, do do as many coats of wood glue as you think you need, and then uh, sand it out with some high grit paper. Yes. I would completely I would dry. dry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of grits uh, for sanding, like what? the lowest to highest that you guys usually do? For wood glue, I would start at 400 because it's already really fine. Um, anything beyond 800, like, while it's great, you're getting into, like, car level detail. Yeah. It really is not going to be... I would say once you pass 600, I wouldn't worry about it because then I would get... Like, if you want it, like, reflective shiny, I would just go for, like, a like an automotive, like, enamel spray paint because those tend to be a little reflective when you spray paint them. Um, I would not wet sand at all because that'll just lift the wood glue if you're using wood glue. Um, and then another thing that came out was Flex Bond. And this is like a cosplay like oriented material that is supposed to be like wood glue, but it's more flexible like Mod Podge. It's like I, I don't know how to dis I don't know how to what the material is in inside it, but it's basically like a very very heavy duty mod podge that doesn't like flake and is really thick and like it works like wood glue, but it's flexible and it's kind of expensive I would say, but it like I used it once and I only needed like I did one layer and I was like I'm kind of done like I only need one layer of this <laughs> it was really good. Have you guys used flex bond before? Yeah, it's like the greatest thing about it is that it's almost self-leveling. So whereas with the wood glue, you have to make sure that you're getting it even all the way around and that it's kind of setting in and leveling. Um, flex bond is like designed 
to auto level itself. So it yeah. makes sense to me there. Um, you can even mix, put a little bit of water in your wood glue, and then the more water you put in your wood glue, the less like paintbrush strokey that you'll see. Um, is the next one black warble? Yeah. So, do we have any questions on warble before we move on to the next material? Okay, cool. So the next one is black warble. So here are some costume pictures that use black warble. Um, Nafini cosplay, Urza, and me. And so here are some, so this is the process that I use for Black Warbler. I would use like a base, do the details, and I spray painted this. Um, and so it got really like in the like middle bottom picture. I used that enamel spray paint that I was talking about. It, it like reflected light pretty well, um, but I like wanted to dirty it up. So uh, this, that's what this picture is. I kind of like weathered it. Um, but yeah, you can definitely, with black warble, I would say you can get really reflective well. Um, here's another process photo of using it. So I used the sandwich method for this. Um, I'm crazy, I don't know why it was so heavy. <laughs> but it was like, yeah. So there's that photo. Um, this yeah. is mine. Uh, so this is my Flame Princess armor, which is a work in progress. But uh, this is showing again, um, my process here was I took some craft foam and then I used uh, another layer of craft foam on top of that to create the uh, the raised edge. Then I sandwiched, uh, not sandwiched, then I put my warbler on top of it and heated it up. I think you can see in one of the photos. Uh, then you used the wooden tool to Yeah, like, I used my wooden tools to, like, um, to heat it up. But uh, yeah, so I used the heat gun and then as it's heating up, it'll start to mold into the shape you have, and you can just use the wooden tool to guide it into the the curves and to the, the edges you put into your project. It really doesn't take a lot to it, but I, I overheat my warbler all the time. So I think in one of the pictures I have a uh, just a regular sewing pin in it, maybe. But if you run into bubbles while you're working with it, you can pop the bubble while it's hot. Well, if, if you overheat it like me, wait for it to cool down for a little bit. It might look pretty janky for until you fix it, but it's fixable. You just need to let it cool down, then you heat it back up, you pop the bubble with a sewing pin, and then you can kind of smooth it out with your hands or with one of your wood tools. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of the process I used to work with black warbler. And um, I would say if you dip your wood tool, do you dip your wood tool in water? No, I haven't heard about that. Yeah, if you do that, it, it like, you can like get into the edge and then if you like pull away a little bit and drag on the surface it'll like smooth it a little bit i think i don't know i'm a little picky with my smoothness so but yeah you can use, i see your like setup over here <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's seriously it's a it's a piece of eva foam on top of an archery target on top of a dog cage <laughs> my dog does not live there i promise but yeah that, that's my setup you don't need anything expensive just whatever you have <laughs> Uh, and then this is uh, the same process I used for Flame Princess. I used on my Wonder Woman armor. Um, but one thing that's cool about this is that I actually took some grommets because I um, my my armor has a corset piece into it. So all of my uh, Wonder Woman armor pieces attach to my corset with grommets. That since you could heat up the warbler, I heated up the warbler. I stuck. I don't know if you know what a grommet looks like, but. Um, I, I stuck the corset grommets through it and then I hammered in just like I would with fabric. And so all my pieces were able to attach to my costume with all the, um, the attachments I already had in place. So that was really great. Um, feel free to like experiment and say, maybe this will work and maybe this will make it way easier on myself than trying to figure out how else this is gonna attach to myself. Experiment so, on a test piece first. Yes, test pieces <laughs> are great. Um, yeah, but I really like Black Warbler because um, I have a lot of it in my house, so that's what I use a lot. Yeah, I would say Black Warbler is my favorite out of all of them. Um, so for self-adhesion, I gave it a 4 out of 5 because I find that it doesn't stick as well as Warbler does. 
Um, I would say that sometimes I have to go in with the heat gun and give it extra bit of heat and press it again to make sure that it's sticking. Did you find that as well? Yeah, I will usually bring some just in case E6000 with me to a hotel. Because I've had occasionally small, small detail pieces pop off just because um, what it's, it is pretty flexible, but sometimes you flex it a little bit too much when you put it on. And, being able to glue it back on is good, so <laughs> and um, I, that's my only caveat. It doesn't stick as well, for sure. And I gave it a one more smoothness compared to Warble's Fine to Start, because it's a bit smoother, and I would say you need less layers of primer if you're going to prime it. Um, and I would say the sculptability is better than Warble. It's a 5 out of 5. Like It's pretty friendly. Like You can sculpt pretty well, and you can get sharper edges than you can compared to Warbler. Like, if you're doing like that raised 3D edging, like all that like Warcraft armor has on it, you can really get those edges really more pointy um, compared to Warbler. And it's a bit more flexible as well. So if you have like a, a chest piece or something, and you need it to like hug your body, it's able to hug your body a little bit more. Um, but don't flex it too much like yeah. you had experienced. And then I gave it a craftability, I gave it a, a heart after the five stars because I really enjoy working with it because it's not really sticky. Like I don't know, it's really easy to work with. I would say if you're a beginner and you want to use Warbla, I would go with Black Warbla because it's like very friendly. I don't know. Have you used Black Warbla? Yeah. Um, when I was experimenting with Warbla, Black Warbla was definitely easier to use, more user friendly as a beginner who's not used to using Warbla. So for sure, it's the way to go. Um, and then primer, I put Flexbond and Mod Podge. So uh, the reason I chose these two is because of the flexibility of the primer. Um, I know Mod Podge sounds silly, but it works. <laughs> um, it has that flexibility to it because if you have armor, that's like, I don't know, I like a little bit of flexibility if my armor's too rigid. I find if I drop it that the paint might chip a little more or I don't know, I find the more rigidness Sometimes it can look cooler, but it can be more prone to damage to a certain extent, especially with acrylic paint. Um, so things like primers that have a little bit of like flexibility, like Flex Bond and Mod Podge, when you paint over them, they just have that little bit of flex that the paint doesn't automatically start chipping off, if that makes sense. I also always seal with Mod Podge. It's a great material. You should buy it by the gallon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like that the half of the gallon? You know, you do, oh, um, so Mod, Mod Podge comes in matte and um, shiny. It has like matte satin gloss matte and satin high gloss. gloss. Um, I, I tend to buy the matte version because I, I don't always want that glare. But again, if you're going for like Gilgamesh from Fate, you want it to be the shiniest thing on the planet, go for high gloss. Okay, so okay. I tried high gloss and it's nasty. I do not like it. Okay. <laughs> um, it like... If you do it too thick or you do too many layers of it, there's like this like blue hue in it that when it dries, it will have like this blue hue over it, and I don't I don't know I don't like it because it's not clear. Well then go for I just do like satin. satin or gloss, but for priming it really doesn't matter. So if you accidentally bought this high gloss, you can use that as your primer just to get rid of it. <laughs> um, and so the next thing. Oh, wait, do we have any questions for Black Warbler before we move on? Uh, so is there any sanding that goes on with Black Warbler, or since it's apparently a finer grain, does it necessarily need that? Yeah, I would say that um, if we go back to these pieces, so I, um, so this picture right here, that looks like I did a bunch of sanding, but uh, that was because I made an error. <laughs> so I actually didn't sand these at all and I got that kind of glossy. You can see there's a little bit of texture, um, but I would say that it's not super sanding friendly. That's a word. Because um, <laughs> uh, if you sand too fast, it'll start to melt on itself because um, uh, of the heat of the sanding. So if you do sand, I would say like, maybe just hit it with a 400 and just hand sand it and just don't go ham on it. Because if you use a Dremel or anything, it'll just heat up too fast and like just move around the, the thermoplastic and you'll get a more rigid thing in the end. Um, 
But yeah, so what happened here is that I did enamel paint, but I did it in like when it was like snowing outside and it was too cold. So the paint started cracking. Um, so I had to like sand it all off and then re-spray paint it. Um, so that's what that is. <laughs> We, do you want to use yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so the next material is uh, that we're going over is Wonderflex. So this stuff is like way less expensive than everything else. However, it has like it has like a mesh netting underneath. So so I, I think what we did mention with black warbler and warbler is that like it's double sided, so you can use both sides. It doesn't really matter. Um, however, with Wonderflex, one side is like the thermoplastic, and then the underside is like this thermo mesh netting, 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 <laughs> netting, and so you can only use one side of the material, which is really annoying because you tend to have more scraps at the end. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that. Um, here are some examples of Wonderflex. As you can see, like the armor, I would say, in my opinion, is not. <laughs> It's not as clean, and it's like a little more textured. It's not as smooth. Uh, that might be hard for other people to see, but to me, uh, I guess my eyes are really picky. But I can, I can, by using Wonderflex, I can tell that like I've had issues with bubbling and stuff like that. As you can see with this, I'm not saying her her stuff is great. For using Wonderflex, this cosplayer did a freaking amazing job. I'm so jealous. Okay, so here's a costume I use Wonderflex for. Um, this whole mask and. These gold pieces right here are made of Wonderflex, um, and then these horns are craft foam, and then these feathers are Velcroed in, so I could travel easier with it. Um, so, wow, I did not have a lot of pictures for that. <laughs> I don't like Wonderflex. <laughs> um, so, with Wonderflex, I wish I had like I should have brought pieces in for you guys to touch. Um, the self adhesion is four out of five. You can only self-adhere on one side of it since it has that netting on the underside. You can't really stick to it. If you do, you have to like overheat the material a lot to stick to the netting. Um, and then the smoothest of it, so it does get pretty smooth. You actually could get away with just spray painting it and not priming it at all. It doesn't have that grain texture like Warblas do, um, which is cool, but uh, I would say that it's more prone to bubbles because uh, that mesh inside kind of like prevents, I don't know, I get more bubbles with it. Um, sculptability, you cannot use the scraps very easily to sculpt at all, so your scraps are kind of like, eh? So I, I don't know, it might be cheaper, but it might not be cheaper in the long run. Um, flexibility, it is, I would say it's more rigid than Morbola. Um, that mesh netting underneath gives it a lot of structure, so if you want something, like, I've, I've seen people use Wonderflex as like, the base of their armor pieces, and they'll put like Warbler on top because they like the rigidity of Wonderflex, and all the bubbles will be hidden by all the detailing that they're doing. Um, and then craftability, I would say that it's pretty easy to work with, except for the fact that you have to be careful of that netting. The netting just literally is the reason I don't like it. <laughs> have you guys used Wonderflex? I've actually not used Wonderflex. Me either. Yeah. <laughs> I, like full on Warbler. Wonderflex is just not like readily available near me. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's um eh, I wouldn't get it. <laughs> we have um, a question though. Oh question. yes. But how much cheaper is Wonderflex? So I would think yeah, so like Warbler is like eighty eight to ninety per sheet. That's for the extra large Yeah, the sheet, extra large sheet. Uh, which is the best value if you which is why we're going to do with $80. Yeah. It's, it's, it's 88 like, It's 88 It's 88 so it's like $90 worth tax. Um, and then Free War shipping, Yeah. Warbler is like 46 to mean 50 Wonder I mean, Flex. Wonderflex, sorry. Wonderflex is like 48 to 50 area. So it's like, what, 60% of the cost? Yes. Yeah. It's about, it's about 60 per <laughs> Oh, gosh. If we're mathing. It's definitely cheaper. Um, you just can't do as much with it. Yeah. Percent. And the scraps aren't like easier to use. Like you can't use the scraps as well as you can with four blood. Um, and then how to prime? I so okay. I thought I was fancy, and I made this thing called gesso podge. Oh, I gosh. mixed gesso and mod podge together. Like I had two things of it, and I mixed them, and I found out that it like it works great. It's like it's like flex bond, just like low rent version that doesn't work as well, but it's kind of like it. <laughs> Um, 
So uh, yeah, so I would use these two primers because they have that flexibility in it. Um, the reason I wouldn't use any type of wood glue is because the uh, the wood glue doesn't have anything to adhere to because the Warbler's Finest Art has those uh, saw the shavings, the wood shavings in it, so that glue can adhere to those wood shavings. However, Wonderflex doesn't have that, so if you use wood glue to prime this, uh, if you flex it in any sort of way, it'll just like all that glue will just crack underneath and just chip off. And that's why you shouldn't use like wood glue with black uh, warbler as well. You can only use it with warbler because um, if you flex the piece at all in any type of way, that it'll chip and it'll just come right off your costume and the paint will go with it. I've had that happen before and it's not fun. Um, and then the next material is Vibra, 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 Vibra. Vibra. I don't know. There's a million, to... everybody says it differently. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this costume is actually Thebra. Um, and this was my first costume with Thebra. And I, this is pretzel cosplays, and I don't know how she did this because it looks so good. Um, but yeah, I don't have any pictures with these. Okay. Well, I, we can pass around or we can like yeah. look up. Okay. So, uh, one thing about Thebra is is that it has a high, uh, it has a lower melting temperature than Warbla or Black Warbla. I can't speak of Wonderflex because I haven't used it, but uh, it heats up much quicker. Yeah. So you have to. Um, I, I've got a picture of Thebra. Okay. So uh, going around, so these things I use the wrapping method with Thebra, and the, a lot of the details are EVA foam. So kind of just the main pieces are Thebra. Um, and so I find that Thebra is real prone to bubbling if you do the sandwich method. So if you are to use Thebra, uh, it, it is cheaper. It's like the co in between the cost of Warbla and Wonderflex. I would say it's like 65 for an extra large sheet. Uh, and, it, um, and I would only use the wrapping method. If you use the sandwich method, as I said before, it is like really high prone to bubbling. And you'll just have to pop a bunch of bubbles. And it's really annoying. Um, and uh, yeah, as you were saying, the heat temperature is way lower, like half. Like I think I've heard somebody like put a hair dryer on, like really, really hot, like that a fancy hair dryer, and they're feeling really hot, and they're able to like heat it up to not all the way heat it up, but like really able to like bend it and like, get it to do what it wants. Yeah. What is the wrapping method? I know so, it's the sandwich method. So the wrapping method is if, like, say you have, like, a piece of craft foam or whatever you're using as, like, your base material, you take, like, you trace that pattern piece onto the Thebra or, like, the thermoplastic and maybe give it, like, a half inch or inch seam allowance and you cut that out and then you just fold that extra seam allowance all around the edges onto the underside. So the back is still going to be your craft foam or right, whatever it right. is for the most part. As opposed to completely encapsulated. Yep. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to, like, completely... Yeah. I, I think it's much easier. You don't get as many air bubbles, and um, from my experience, you save a lot more material. And I, I think it's also easier to get curves with your armor because um, what I will do is um, if I've got a really deep curve, um, like my Wind Princess armor had a really deep uh, concave curve, you can cut notches into your your warbla or your vibra or whatever you're using and you can fold it over the, the edge like you would if you were making a garment and you were going to get that nice curve. You can cut those notches and just fold over the smaller pieces and get a cleaner curve with it. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, well, for doing the wrapping or sandwich method, how well does the uh, thermoplastic stick to the foam? So um, I would say that for the warbler, uh, I would say that it actually doesn't stick to the foam, so it's kind of like, I think that's why the air pockets are there, because it doesn't stick to the foam, so the foam has like air in it, and so the air will rise when you heat it. Um, but if you like overheat the warbler, you can eventually get it to stick to the foam. However, with Thebra, it'll stick to the foam. Like, so this first section I have self-adhesion, I should add like 20 more boxes here, because it will stick to everything. <laughs> like, I, it'll even stick to like glass. Like I have those domes on my armor, are glass domes, and I just like heated up the Thebra and stuck the glass domes on it and they stayed. I don't know how that happened because usually glass 
is safe for thermoplastics. You can like get away with using glass and thermoplastics together, but not with fever. It sticks to everything. <laughs> uh, for black formula, I think it's pretty easy though. I primarily use black formula, but I have I've had no problems getting it to stick to the bulb on the other side for the the. The, the foldover method? The wrapping? The wrapping method. I don't know. I just made it up. I, I fold over. The, the wrapping... Um, foldover makes more sense, to be honest. But yeah, the foldover wrapping method. Um, that it, I've had no problems with black warbler. Uh, I have not done it with regular warbler. Last time I made armor with regular warbler, I used the sandwich method. Um, Wait, you don't have troubles with it sticking in the other side? No, this, oh. is, this is all black warbler. Oh, it is. It's no problem. I like sometimes I'll like put a dab of super glue just in case, but I'm also like the type of person where I need to throw my armor against the wall, make sure it doesn't break before like I finish building. <laughs> Question. Yeah. Uh, Libra is cheaper. Yeah, it's like I would say sixty-five for a jumbo sheet, so that's like cheaper than Warbla, but more expensive than Wonder Flags. Uh, for my personal taste with Fibra, I. I really like to use it just for detail pieces, or um, you'll see later I've got my plant dragon armor, I made a bunch of leaves for it, but uh, it, it, it take, it, it, it's really easy to sculpt with it. I think that's the, the biggest advantage with fever is the sculptability, especially since it's a lower temperature and you can heat it up and it's not gonna burn your fingers. Um, I, I made like weird spikes for, um, for a lance, in January with fever and it was really easy, way better than, than uh, the foam clay, in my opinion. But uh, I'm really bad at overheating and getting huge air bubbles, and fever is not forgiving yeah. with fingerprints, and, and um, if you mess up, it's much harder to fix than if you work with yeah. black fibra. So I think the branding around fever when they were selling it was the fact that you don't have to prime it. Yeah. Which is true. You don't um, have to prime you don't it because it it's, it's super smooth and it takes spray paint really well. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, the next point is smooth. It's super smooth. Um, you can get it to like, like my armor before it's painted, like it's smooth enough to where I can like move it like this and see like the light kind of shine on it. It's like crazy smooth. But it, yeah, you can see your fingerprints on it if you like, so you're I not careful say enough. It's a great material, but it's not as beginner friendly. Yeah, especially, well, okay, so my thing with it is that both of us used, like, Warbla first, and so, like, our hands and minds are accustomed to using Warbla, so, like, our, our, like, crafting language is, like, oh, this is how you make armor, you, like, sandwich or fold over method and use Warbla, and Thebra is, like, I would say it's not comparable on the same level, like, not, like, status-wise, but, like, I wouldn't necessarily use Thebra for armor per se i would use it more for like details and like more sculptability you know, sculpting things and more like like uh three-dimensional things if that makes sense um i've seen a lot of people it doesn't stick to silicone so i've seen people have like silicone molds of like filigree and they'll take their scraps and just push it into the filigree mold when it's heated up and wait like 15 seconds and pull it out and they have like a little thermoplastic like filigree or something like that so it does take to mold so you can do like molds with it which is super cool and then all you do is heat the back side of that up and you can stick it onto your armor or something like that yeah it, it sticks really well to uh to Warbla. yeah it sticks to it yeah. sticks to plastic really yeah it well. sticks to everything um, on, <laughs> on this this is my shoe piece all these little like i don't know what call them the little spots they're continents the the, <laughs> the the little spots on my armor they're all fibra I was having trouble getting the shape to hold for my to my shoe, and so I decided since the breath has a lower melting temperature, I didn't have to heat it up as much. I didn't have to worry about uh, the shape of my shoe uh, piece uh, changing while I was adding the detail pieces to it. So that's why I chose that. And I had a whole sheet of paper, and I was like, "Sure, yeah, let's use some scraps." <laughs> <laughs> um, well. But it, it sticks really well to well to black warble. I haven't stuck it. To yeah, it sticks to all. Also, I gave, okay, so our costume shop teacher, we tell her these things all the time about the materials that we use, and I gave her some Thebra because she wanted to see, like, why I hated it. <laughs> and um, she was like, oh, I need to fix my, um, my uh, charger to my phone because it was like, you know how, like, 
the end bit, if you twist it too much, you can like the wire starts to expose. So she heated up some Febra and just put it on there and it protected her wire from exposing. So she's like, she's used Thebra for a lot of like nifty, like household things that she's fixed. So like, if you have Thebra scraps, like you can use it for things around your house as well instead of cosplay. Um, but yeah, so continuing this sculptability, I gave it a four out of five. Um, the reason I gave it a point off is because uh, of the fact that it can stick to tools if you're using tools. So maybe get some like, dip your tool in water or um, use some sort of like silicone based lube to lube your tool up before you use the Thebra. Um, and then also flexibility, super flexible. Um, yeah, great, Out of, compared to all of them, it like, if you have like a chest piece, it can flex really nice and fit tightly to your body. And then craftability, I don't know, it's not user friendly to me because I grew up, not grew up, but like started with Warbla, so my mind is accustomed to that. So that's why I gave it a biased review of two. <laughs> um, it doesn't melt when you stand it though, because I... Oh, really? Yeah, I was making, I made these spikes, I should have taken a picture of them because you can't see it on my photos, but I made these tiny spikes that were gonna go on to an EVA film prop, and this, the base was supposed to be a circle, and I just, made kind of a circle, and then I sanded it out to look more like a circle. So it doesn't melt when you sand it, which is nice. <laughs> Do you use Thebra? I have used Thebra, but not for anything great that I like to talk about. So, um, yeah, if you, if you, like they were saying, really, like, your craft language, uh, what you grow up, or what you develop your you skills up. in, um, really makes a difference, and Thebra is just not something that is, like, my foam skills are very transferable to Yeah. But if you can so, get a sheet on discount, yeah. go for it. I got one for like 40% off when Arda was getting yeah. rid of all their products. And yeah. I was like, sure, let's learn how to do it. And I still have like half a sheet left after I did all my, um, my dragon armor, which is one of the slides that are coming up. Yeah, and I know a lot of people who started with Zebra and haven't used Warbla, and they say that they love it and it's really easy for them because um, they like the lower heating temperature and everything. Um, so, and then when they use Warbler, they find it to be more work. Um, so that's what they think, I don't know. Um, and then how to prime, since it's so flexible, I would go with Flex Bond and Gesso Podge again, um, just because of the flexibility of them. Honestly, I would, if you like really want nice shiny armor, I would use, invest in Flex Bond, it's great. Um, and then mixing mediums. So this is like mixing thermoplastics with other materials um, to save money because if you, and save weight because oh, if you yeah. make a whole piece of armor out of just Warbla, it's gonna be a lot heavier than if you like did the details of foam. So uh, this is my Meg armor uh, from Hercules and it's made out of, it's got it's craft foam for the pauldrons, because I couldn't figure out how to get more politico of those shapes. Pauldrons are terrible. Sorry, they are. <laughs> um, but the gauntlets are made out of regular warbla with black warbla scraps on it. My breastplate is black warbla. Uh, there's also epoxy sculpt on it. I love epoxy sculpt because um, before, before I bought Vibra, it, I really, really hated heating up black warbla to get beveled edges. So this is all epoxy sculpt bevel edges. Um, although epoxy sculpt can pop off, so E6000, bring it with you. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's also epoxy sculpt and uh, black warbler on my pauldrons. But if you are not using the wrapping method with your craft foam, uh, it doesn't stick as well if you're just putting a rolled bevel edge onto your armor. So E6000, I love that shit. Buy it. <laughs> and if you're using craft foam for your detailing, um, I, for this armor, everything is super glued onto Thebra. And so like, it was super cheap. I didn't have to buy cra crazy glue. Well, no, the brand was crazy glue, but not like crazy expensive glue. <laughs> um, but yeah, I spent like 10 bucks on like a big old thing of super glue. And I just like popped it on the underside of some of the craft foam, and just stuck it on and found out that it like was not coming off. So it worked really well, especially for like this beveled edge. So there's this place called TNT Cosplay Supplies and they sell a bunch of foam stuff. 
um, as well as like they're starting to like do like beveled edges from foam and like uh, round like yeah, rods round like stuff. foam rods and stuff like that. And if, if you're buying EVA foam, I would definitely definitely go to TNT Cosplay Supplies. Mm -hmm. um, you just Google that. I think it's just TNT Cosplay Supplies. Yeah, it shows up. But uh, they do double sided um, smooth on both sides craft foam, and it's maybe ten dollars a sheet. Yeah. Um, if that, I think the I think the thinner ones are, are less expensive. And the sheets are like, what, five feet by two feet, something like that. They're pretty they're big. Five feet, but they're really big. Um, when I when I make armor, I tend to do the um, the two millimeter craft foam you can buy at like Michaels, but you can buy uh, thicker millimeter um, at TNT, and it's it's great stuff. But I guess here you can see you can mix different materials. Um, some don't. If you're using a thermoplastic to a thermoplastic, in general, they will stick to each other yeah. pretty well. Maybe not 100%, but um, if you're using something like epoxy sculpt, or um, I've used model magic on my armor, uh, those don't stick as well. So uh, just back up E6000 or super glue. <laughs> E6000 isn't that expensive, and Walmart sells it the cheapest, is what I found. So pro tip. And then this is my Mordormoth armor, which if you can see, um, I think the far right photo is my, my leg pieces. Um, I made Thibra leaves, and Thibra because it oh. it takes, um, it's really easy to, uh, to add your fingerprints to it. it, it I was able to just take, a, um, take one of my wooden tools and draw out the, the leaf lines oh. and um, to shape it. And it was really easy. The only problem I had with it was when I was sticking the thibra leaves to other thibra pieces. If you if you didn't put it on right the first time, it was just gonna yep. look like that. Yeah. So with like black warbler, since it doesn't stick to itself like a hundred percent, like ninety percent, um, if you make a mistake, you can like peel it off a little bit and then kind of restick it on in a different place. Um, however, with thibra, if you touch another piece of thibra. It's, it's there. <laughs> so, so you just have to keep it there. You make it work. <laughs> that's what it's going to look like. You put some paint on it to fix it. Um, other things here, you can see my hit plates, the flowers, the, the beveled edge there. That's Model Magic. Um, <laughs> Model Magic, it, it's cheap and it's, e it's easy to work with, but it is really susceptible. It's, it's really easy to damage it. And so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but I know some people that have used like silicone mold, they put their model magic pieces into it, and it's a really cheap way to make cool looking armor pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I really like epoxy sculpt, which comes in two little jars, um, which is what is on the arm pieces. Um, and you can see the shoes, they've got uh, epoxy sculpt, like horn things in the photo, vibra on the little, Continents, which help them, <laughs> and, um, and then more epoxy sculpts for the, the small details. But uh, epoxy sculpt is like, it's two different jars of putty that you mix together. Uh, I recommend, I got a cheap um, cutting mat, and I do all my rolling because epoxy sculpt, it makes a mess. It makes a mess. Um, you're supposed to use gloves. I'm a bad cosplayer and don't use gloves, but it's hard to get off your hands. Maybe use gloves, but you can roll it out, and you've got about um, once you combine them, you have about two hours you can work with it, and so it's uh, it's pretty great stuff. I like I like it for details because like, again I hate heating up more blood, and sticking it on things because it's less intuitive in my opinion than like rolling out putty. <laughs> so I like epoxy stuff. It's great, but it's heavier, um, and. I lost like half the horn. So E6000, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> this panel is turned into an E6000 E6, yeah, panel. It's an E6000 plug. <laughs> <laughs> I then swear we're not sponsored, of... but if they want to give me more, I will definitely take it. Did you, you made this out of scraps too? It's kind of like my wand that I made? Yeah, that's made out. Um, so these are the small random accessories. I don't, I've only made two armors before, but um, I, I left it really hard to see because so my floor is white. But I made this crown. I have a four glove for, um, uh, I don't know if anyone knows me, knows me but one of the characters is me. Uh, my splicer mask. Uh, there are tiny thibber things on, you can't see it. 
on the side of my lance for Aranea, my hair accessories. Um, I use for thermoplastics for. Um, I made a sword, a sword with a dowel rod <laughs> that I covered in warbler, and then um, the hilt is also um, a piece of foam that I covered in warbler and just stuck it together. Uh, the crown I made, and then man, I need to like write my photo. <laughs> um, then I also made a hair accessory for May from Overwatch out of just warbler scraps that I rolled together. So that's what I primarily use it for. Uh, Armor is expensive and really hard to store, but it's really cool, so you should make it. But you can also make small accessories, and they're cool because you can put them on your wall and be like, look at the awesome stuff I made. Be jealous. <laughs> and I think we have five minutes left, so questions for five minutes? Yeah. What are the general sizes for the Jumbo Warbler sheets? What's the general size? Like, what size is the Jumbo Warbler? Um, I think they I measure think it like in like centimeters or something. Yeah. yeah, something like that. It's um, like five feet by what, two and a half inch? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... They say five feet by two and a half, gen like a general yeah, gen estimation. So I used one piece of Jumbo Warbler for all of my... Can we go back to my armor? This one. So yeah, for all of my armor pieces from Wardermont that are pictured there, uh, plus the breastplate and the, uh, oh, yeah, I, I guess I think those were the main So, um, so the, I hate pauldrons, I hate them. Um, so for the pauldrons, the breastplate, and all those armor pieces, um, I use the foldover method and I use less than one sheet of black, like the jumbo black warbler. Um, yeah, and to show comparison of methods, so like, where is my, my breastplate, like my black warble breastplate, like that big one I made. Let's see. This one? So you said you made that whole entire armor out of... Like, a little bit less than one. A little bit less than one jumbo sheet. So this whole breastplate was one sheet <laughs> of the jumbo sheet of warble, or black warble. And that's because I used the sandwich method. So both sides were completely like smooth and sandwiched and everything. Um, so that is showing you how different in price it's going to be. So if you I don't want, know what if you I want to make thinking. armor and you want to use thermoplastic, I highly recommend the foldover method because you will save a lot of money. Yeah, but if you're going for like authenticity and like you're going to wear it like 20 million times, like then maybe you'll do the sandwich method. But if you're just starting, I would say definitely do like the wrap over fold over method. Question. Oh, yeah, so um, I've used a little bit of it. I bought like a little sheet. Um, and so what I would, I didn't like it, but I, but because I think I was trying to use it for things that maybe it wasn't used for. So I've seen a lot of people successfully use it as like making like a fire prop, like it looked like they're holding fire or making like a, an icicle crown or something like that. Um, but I was trying to make it like gems, like kind of make little domes and paint the undersides and stuff like that. Um, that doesn't work. That's really hard to do. I couldn't get it to work. Um, however, I tried to make like icicles out of it and I find that it's really, it doesn't stick to itself very well. Um, I have to like overheat it and to really like, really heat it to get it to stick to itself. Um, however, if you can just get by that and you're trying to do like icicles or like some kind of like holding fire or something, um, you could do that. But don't use it for gems. It's, it's not good for gems. Also, if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to the transpar art. Transpar art? Transpar art? Trans yeah, Trans if you're looking for a cheap alternative to that, you can use Pet G plastic. And it's like they sell it on Amazon in sheets. Um, it's a clear thermal plastic, just like the others. It doesn't have the stick to itself properties, but if you're looking to make props or line some sort of sword that you're gonna light up or something, um, Pet G plastic is like probably three times less of the cost. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Uh, so if you're gonna put like circuitry in your armor, mm -hmm. uh, would that just like leave space uh, the warbler or just kind of 
find a transparent plastic at that point and just kind of outline where you want the lights to be? Um, how, it just depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah, it depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, the way I do, do light up stuff is that I make the armor and then usually I kind of leave a hole where something's gonna light up and then I'll put something clear or like some kind of gem something there and then I'll light it from the underside so that so basically leaving a hole in my armor pattern um, but that's how I usually do light up stuff on my armor um, I just think key for electronics is plan it out beforehand yeah before you start do a little test run <laughs> um, yeah test runs are always good mm -hmm. And there's a question behind you. Did we answer your question properly? Okay. So how did you make the spikes that you're wearing? These up yeah. here? Well, no, the like- Oh, these? Holders. Okay, so uh, I, for this whole costume, I was like, I'm not resin casting anything. I am so lazy and I don't wanna spend money. <laughs> so I found uh, the, gem the gems on this and these were both bought on Amazon. So these are clear acrylic like ring holders. So like at like ring booths, they like set out rings on these holders and they like show them off and stuff like that. And so like 10 of them, they're each a dollar. So it was like 10 for 10 bucks. Um, and I just painted the insides and I just kind of super glued them onto the Vibra base. Um, and then those, they're like, they're for jewelry making, for necklaces, for pendants. They're called like glass dome. Cap, yeah. I did not, I never heard that word. And I was like, catacombs, what? Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just paint the undersides with like glow in the dark paint or something or any kind of paint. And then I just glue them onto the armor and they're, they're round domes. Like, why am I gonna resin cast round domes? Like, I don't need to do that if I can just buy them for like 25 cents for each one. So they're super cheap. Um, one more question? Oh no, we are one minute over time. Um, so yeah, that is the end of our panel. <laughs> 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 <laughs>